Hi, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I'm going to be playing a Poison Necro. The Poison Dagger Necro is widely regarded as one of the worst classes in the game. Can it really not beat the game? So what is the Poison Necro? It's a Necromancer using the skills Poison Dagger, Poison Nova and Poison Explosion. And they all just add a lot of poison damage, hence the name Poison, Dagger, Nova and Explosion. We start off our run by finding a set quilted armor, which is a arctic first, and that has 10 resist all, so that's a very nice find to start off with. So the first thing you want to do with this build is get to level 6, get yourself some poison dagger so you can stab some things and let them poison to death. Also, we're here trying to stab rock an issue and let the poison dig down, because poison always deals a lot of damage, but it just takes a while to do it. And you want to use that to find a tal and an eth rune, as more tal runes drop for us. I drop another quilted armor, so we have two of these now. Still no stealth though, so I decide to move along because I'm getting pretty high level and I do want to keep things moving. But you can really see the poison work. You saw me stabbing him once, waiting a while, and then just looking back at it, he was almost dead. And I make my way towards Andario to look at who the real poison queen is. And one of the things I noticed with Andario and fighting her is that this is, well, taking kind of forever. Which is a really bad sign if your first real boss takes this long. Especially considering her poison damage isn't taking that long at all. So I'm just running away from her waiting for my potion to do its work. Stab her again. And with the passage of time, she dies of old age. And I make my way towards Act 2, where I hit level 18, so that means I get Poison Explosion. And Poison Explosion looks amazing on paper, because it deals a very big number of damage. But it also takes a long time to deal that damage. Well, it's basically the Poison version of Corpse Explosion. And here we have Duriel. I can tank him thanks to Thawing Pots. So the mercenary gets to deal his damage, and I get to poison him. And I'm actually glad he's targeting me for the damage, because he deals more damage to the mercenary than he does to me. Mercenaries get more damage from a boss than a main player does. And the poison takes him down. And the game here is to just make sure they're all poisoned so they're all ticking down at the same time and eventually they will fall over dead. And once again, this is a very rough boss fight. If the boss fights in normal are looking like this, I am very worried about Nightmare and especially Hell. And the Israel fight, same deal, just a long time of waiting. And after Israel, I decide to just run through the city of the damned, all consequences be well damned. In the Chaos Sanctuary, it is the name of the game again to just stab one at a time and wait for them to die. And here one of the big problems with Corpse Explosion is really showing itself. You can see how much I am blowing up corpses and nothing is getting hit. Like Corpse Explosion needs like double or maybe even triple the range to be good. I mean imagine if I could just Corpse Explosion this now. Instead of having to run away. And I end up having to lure them around the pentagram in the middle and just jab them one at a time. As I keep trying to lure them in because it is damage but it's just not very much. And this is very telling already that even normal is being this hard on this character. It's just a very big dangerous risky affair here just trying to dodge the Venom Lords. Trying to run away every single time. And just really trying to get in one poke at a time. And they are just tanking this without too many problems. So I have to target Infector of Souls. And just hope that he dies so the rest will die. And I can move along towards Diablo. At this point I was starting to realize that people on the internet might have a point. This isn't the greatest damage setup I have ever played. I mean I am struggling to get through the Venom Lords. But I do end up taking Infector down. And then it's time for the Diablo fight. And let's see how that looks. Oh, my mercenary evaporates in the lightning. The poison explosion just has so little range that even if he's standing right next to it, he's just not getting hit by it. And here you can really tell that my attack rating is bad. I'm just whiffing all the time on attacks and he's just spamming skills like crazy on me. So yeah, I'm gonna need to do a lot of brainstorming to make this work in hell. Because these boss fights are absolutely atrocious at this point. He gets me down all the way to 48 HP as I run for my life and go and get my mercenary. Who just dies again. One thing that might also help is if Poison Dagger worked with throwing knives. Because they're qualified as daggers but you can't use it with them. So you'd be able to become like a throwing ninja or something. That would be really cool. 
and the entire fight at this point is just making sure that Diablo is taking damage and just waiting. This was like a 15 minute Diablo normal fight and it's only going to get worse. So I go ahead and use the dagger to kill the door for the barbarians because it's poison immune and that's a big problem in this run as well. There are a lot of poison immunes in this game so I am going to have to find a way around them. I end up finding a soul rune, so I now I have odd soul which makes lore, so that's a plus one skill helmet. And I use that to make my way into the frozen river where I'm finally starting to see why poison nova is so much better. Like, look at this, things are dying, it's great. And this is just nice, I deal damage, I do stuff, I'm relevant, I matter, I'm important again. I mean, it's not like I'm dealing a lot of damage, but at least I'm doing something. As I am trying to stab the ancients here to make sure the open wounds is going. And that's just the name of the game here. Stab, trigger open wounds, trigger the poison damage, and wait. So in the throne room, we are going to go ahead and get rid of the minions by luring them out. Because they are just literally out healing me. So I just run away. Bill ends up getting stuck here, so he just stands around and waits for a while. Don't know what happened there. And I'm just waiting for the bleed and the poison to take him down. There's just no point in me just running up to him and being like, yeah, I'm gonna melee you now. I just need to be patient here. So I'm just running in every single time his open wounds end, he stops bleeding, and I just reapply it until he dies. And he ends up dropping me a Grim Wand, which is a Hume's Lament, and that's an upgrade for now, because while it doesn't trigger the Poison Dagger, I just can't Poison Dagger with this at all. It does increase my damage for the Poison Nova, and that's what I need, because I need to go to the Secret Cow level, because one thing this build does very well is the Secret Cow level. This is one of the best Cow Runners in the game. I mean, this is just beautiful. They're all running into the Nova, taking a bunch of damage. This is Player's 5 Cow level, by the way. They drop me an M rune, so that's the first start to making a Spirit. And once I realize I'm high enough level, I go to Nightmare where I end up finding a Dol Rune in the Underground Passage. And as I'm working my way around the Tree of Innifers, I also find an Io Rune. So now I have Dol Io. And those together make the rune worth wide. So I just go ahead and chop any Bone Wand with two open sockets. I don't really care about getting Poison Nova on them. I mean, it would be better, but it will also take forever. If you do find one that has Poison Nova on it, use that one instead. It will deal way more damage. So I go ahead and put the Doll in and I put the Io in. And it gets me a White, that's a Bone Wand, with plus 3 Poison and Bone skills and 20 FCR. In the Bloodmore, I find a insane amulet with plus one necro skills and a ton of resists. As I make my way towards Andariel, I've also put a point into lower resist at this point, so I deal a bit more damage. So this time I'm still running around away from Andariel, but at least I'm dealing more damage than last time. Because I found a white, I didn't bother with the counters at all, so I just ran along. I figured, well, I have white now, I don't need spirit. But the problem with that is my life total is pretty low at this point. And as you can tell, I'm just taking big whacks from Duriel here. I mean, he's literally slapping me for like 80 to 100 damage while I have 490 life. So that's very dangerous. So I decide to go back to town and get my mercenary and hope he just tanks it a bit better than I do. And he ends up tanking for quite a while actually and Duriel finally taking some real damage here. Because well the mercenary is obviously doing this way better than I am. But we managed to take down Duriel and because I was taking so much damage I decide to go back to the tower anyway. So I can go ahead and make a spirit, so that's Tal, Thul, or Am. And I get a 25% faster cast rate spirit, but that's okay, I at least get 22 vitality. I also decided I need to do even more safety things, so I also make an Ancient's Pledge. And I make my way into the Spider Forest, where I find a 4 socket partisan, so I put in Ral, Tear, Tal, Sol. Which makes for a spirit, I get a level 16 meditation aura, so now my mana problems are solved. Council finally gets me my stealth. 
And even with the mercenary tanking and the lower resist going, Poison Nova is just not doing enough to bosses. I need to find another way to clear them because this is not going to be very good. And as the Novas are flying through the air, Mephisto's life total is getting lower and lower. So I switch to my MF gear, which means that I just equip the three socket breastplate that I just made and I end up finding a round shield from Mephisto. It's a Moses Blast Circle. It has 25 resist all and my fire resist is pretty low. So I decided to put a Rao rune in there. So the Chaos Sanctuary brings us our first of a very big problem. The Venom Lords are poison immune and while lower resist breaks them, the damage is just sad. So we need to get a second source of damage. Because what I'm doing now is not really working. The Mercenary is kind of pulling through, but that's because I'm basically having him on an IV of potions. And even then I need to lure them out. And while you can do this in the Nightmare Chaos Sanctuary, this is not gonna work in the Hell Chaos Sanctuary. Then Diablo immediately rushes up and destroys my mercenary. But I'm just dodging his attacks and spamming poison Nova. The fight in Nightmare went much better than the fight in Normal did. Because all I have to do is dodge lightning. But instead of having to run in, I can just use my range from the Nova to deal damage. But I do still have to be careful though. Like if the lightning hits me, I'm not tanky enough. I need to keep dodging. So I'm just going in circles around Diablo. Dodging lightning, dodging fire. And with one final poison nova we make our way towards eldritch for some more levels because basically at this point all i need is more damage and places where poison actually works and once again trying to poison explosion but it's just not hitting and here we have one of the big things with this run because i'm no longer wearing a dagger i can't use poison dagger on the door so i can't attack the door so i end up needing to go back to town and take the town portal back so my mercenary spawns here and can kill the door for me like a butler basically and make my way towards the Ancients and once again lower resist plus Poison Nova is doing quite well here. You just have a lot of room to work with. The plus skill shine also helps, it's like 600 extra damage. It also makes me very happy that the mercenary is distracting them away from me. And because I can hit multiple of the Ancients at the same time, I can just make sure they are poisoned all together all at the same time. Which makes the fight a lot easier to do. I do have to be very careful with Talik though, he is fire enchanted and if he explodes I will be dead. Doesn't matter how much resist I have or how much HP I have, I will be dead. But after the Ancients we get the Worldstone Keep where I am immediately greeted by some angry Minotaurs and I decide to just go back and try again. And here we have another Poison Immune so what I decide to do is just lower resist but it's not breaking him. And this is the thing I was worried about, with lower resist not breaking him, I'm just not dealing enough damage, so I decide to go and try something else. I go for the Crapify, and the Crapify, and it works way better than lower resist, so I end up using it on the minions of destruction as well. And where I couldn't kill them in normal, I do end up with a mercenary just beating them in Nightmare because of the Crapify. I mean, he is just making mincemeat out of List of the Torment, that is nuts! But between the open wounds, the poison, the holy freeze and the decrepify, this actually turns into a very slow but very safe bail fight. After bail, we make our way towards the not so secret cow level to go and prepare for hell. We need better gear, we need a second type of damage, we need well, just level so we can get more HP, we need whatever we can find basically. But the cow level is where this character really comes to life. You can see me just running around poisoning things. Entire fields of cows just dropping. As you go around spam the nova near them. And the cow king ends up dropping us a spine ripper. And that is a dagger that we can actually use to use poison dagger. So I decide to do some more leveling here as well in the cold plains. It's just a lot of boss packs, lots of stuff dying very quickly to poison. I always think the cold plains are a very underrated place to use to level up. And after saving Kane, we make our way towards the pit because the pit is another place where this build does very well. The Poison Nova Necro is actually one of my favorite pit farmers. And here you can really see why. I'm very underleveled for this area and things are still dying pretty quickly. I do need to be very careful with those archers though. I decide to run in and actually stab the archer as well because that just deals more damage. And look at this, everything is just dying in 2 to 3 hits. And now I know the strategy, I just need to decrepify and let my mercenary do all the real talking. And just look at how beautiful this fight is. I mean she's like in slow motion ballet. 
as I just run in and poison dagger things. I also decided to use a clay golem because at this point I've maxed my poison skills. And you do very well in the maggot lab, you just have poison nova that just yeets through the enemies. I find a bunch of fanaticism maggots so I decide to do the only sensible thing and just turn around and find another way. Because I can deal with a boss pack of beetles without any problems. But fanaticism maggots? Yeah, that's not happening. One thing that makes the Crapify very good is that it can break physical immunes as well. So in the Arcane Sanctuary, my mercenary actually gets to deal damage to the ghosts. It also starts to show that I'm putting points into the Clay Golem. Because he is just tanking this Unraveler and his friends all on his own. Clay Golem really putting in the work here. So one thing you always want to do, and this is more a theoretical thing than a direct gaming, is thinking, okay, this build is just known for being very bad. Which of the things that I know are good can I apply to this build? So for instance, in this run, I was like, okay, I barely deal any damage. There are a ton of poison immunes. I have a hard time getting through the game. What can I do? And it turned out that trying to lower their defenses so I can hit them more with the poison dagger ended up getting me to decrapify. And it also ended up with me getting Holy Freeze, so they are slower while taking a lot of poison damage. Look at this Duriel fight, he is literally moving in slow motion, like he is doing nothing. But if you're ever in a game where you're like, okay, I don't know what to do here. Think of the concepts that work, that you know work, and how do you apply them to your situation here. And the slow ended up being the thing that started to get me through this. You also don't need to be super efficient or anything. If you're winning, you're winning. Nobody cares if you win in like 10 hours or 40. Nobody cares, like as long as you won. But there's one final big hurdle in the way here in Act 3. We have the Undead Flares. But I just have so much crowd control at this point. They literally cannot move or reach me. So the mercenary can just wipe them up. Some fanaticism flares, but the clay golem is so tanky that he can just walk in there. And I use that to lure a few out and I just poison over those. But just every single enemy in the game at this point is just broken. Like this just broke the game. Okay, so for the Magic the Gathering players under us, this is like playing Stasis. Nothing happens ever, but eventually you will win. So look at this. Dolls, poison immune, fire immune, fanaticism. Doesn't matter, we got this. You can see me using the poison explosion here and that's the best use that I found for it because there's an unraveler in the back and he's reviving the dolls and I'm just using the poison explosion to get rid of the corpses. Which brings us to council time. And they aren't poison immune so guess what happens here. They get slowed, they get holy freezed and they get poisoned. I mean Alice Cooper would be proud. I mean this is just a scene of beauty. We have four council members and they're doing nothing. This is one of the most dangerous fights in the game. And they're doing nothing. And the Mephisto fight is just more of the same. Slow, holy freeze, to crapify. So as Mephisto looks like he's playing underwater. Act 4 starts off with some very dangerous might overlords. But the golem at this point can just tank them. And honestly this is just like looking at a piece of art. This entire screen is just completely under my control. The game was so impressed with the build that they just had a giant crowd waiting for me at the Plains of Despair. And while it isn't taking a lot of damage from the poison, the mercenary can just work his way through it. In the Chaos Sanctuary I'm using the small parts between the areas to lure them in one at a time. Because what I don't want to happen here is get surrounded and get attacked from the back. And at this point in a run you need to really think like what can lose me the game? Where do things go wrong? It's not about winning anymore. When you keep playing like this, you will win eventually. But what can go wrong? And one of the things that can happen is that you can get critical hit, you can get cursed, you can get surrounded. And all you need to do at this point is just work your way around those situations. Just don't let them happen. For instance, here with the Venom Lords, I'm still just on one side of the screen and they are on another side. But I decide to run away. I just want to make sure that I can't get stuck there. So I use the River of Flame to go all the way back. And here I have a natural path again. The Venom Lords can't go over the seal, so this is a nice block to use for the mercenary. Is this fast? No, not at all. This is terribly slow. But you know what it is? Save. In the Diablo fight, I decide to lure him out. And then it's just business as usual. His lightning is hitting no one. He is slowed. 
Once again, the animations look beautiful, but well, yeah, they're just not dealing damage. And it's really just a matter of time before he goes down. And he ends up dropping me a Cryptic Axe and a Man Catcher. So that's a Tomb Reaver, just only one socket. This can have three sockets. Once again, I'm just trying to get through the barricade. And I just really want my mercenary and my golem there so they can kill the barricade so I can get through. So yeah, the biggest problem with this entire build is just how uh, you can't deal with barricades or doors. And for the ancients, if you're using the crapify, you have to be very careful because if you slow the whirlwind... Because if you slow Talik down, he goes and whirlwinds very slowly and that means he can hit you more often. And you don't even need to split them up for this fight because look at this. This is just a 3 on 3 and as long as you're careful of Talik's whirlwind, things will be fine. And we get a big case of Deja Vu in the Worldstone Keep level 1 because once again we are greeted by some Death Lords. However, this time... We have a plan. And I end up making my way towards Achmel the Cursed, who is out healing the damage my mercenary and my golem are dealing. So what I decide to do here is I walk forward and I take the Decrepify instead of the mercenary and the golem. So what Bale does is his Decrepify, he throws at the first thing he can find. So now he's targeting me with the Decrepify, which means the mercenary and the golem are able to deal more damage and that makes it so that they can actually beat Ahmel the Cursed. And that brings us to the bail fight and as you can tell I fast forwarded through it. So this is a 30 minute bail fight, I just have him completely under my control and he's just standing there getting poisoned, getting the open wounds, I'm just poison daggering him to death. He ends up breaking out a bit and he uses it to teleport to another corner but we can just continue the lock there. I even go through all of my durability with my dagger. So here's my gear, it's a spine ripper, it's a lore. It's this insane amulet, it's a Moses, stealth, these gloves with some resist, I have some resist on a ring, I have a life on a belt, I have some more resist on a ring and some boots, I have a rhyme and a spirit on a switch, I'm using the spirit for the nova and I'm using the dagger for the poison dagger obviously. These are my stats and this is my build, so I have a bunch of points in the golem, I have the poison skills. I have low resist and the crapify, and the mercenary just has like random socketed stuff, and an inside. And with that, there you have it the Guardian Poison Necro. If you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye bye.